In this one, we're going to go over FMS use, managing the GPS. Uh, we're going to use a route from Randolph to Robert Gray, K-G-R-K. We'll go over loading the route, loading the flight plan, loading a GPS approach, looking at alpha and bullseye checks, which we'll be using a lot in the fighter fundamentals phase. We'll go direct to point, we'll go nearest, We'll uh, hit up uh, Route 2 on the way back. Look at standby frequencies to help minimize the workload that you have in the cockpit. Holding and checking your flight plan via the nav page and vectors to a GPS approach. First things first, we'll start on the ground. So we'll simulate on the ground. Don't worry about this 8000 here. I've got this simulator on pause. What we're going to do, we're going to load up a route just like you normally always do. Randolph 2, we got to put in KGRK. Alright, it's going to say execute. Not going to execute it right now. The route that we have filed is going to be Randolph Direct San Antonio, Victor 163 to Slim, and then Robert Gray. And we're expecting the GPS approach into 1-5 full procedure. We'll load that up here in a little bit. But I'll show you how to easily put this route in using the FMS. First things first, what you're going to do, Randolph to Robert Gray. Because we have a Victor Airway, we can throw in the whole Victor Airway in the VIA portion. So let's start with our first point. We're going to go San Antonio VOR. say direct so this will always be your points and this is going to be how you're going to get there so direct San Antonio and this can be Victor 163 and then we'll put the end point so this is where we're going to jump into Victor 163 and then we're going to put the exit point and that'll be slim and you'll get all these points from your pre-mission flight planning There we go. Now I'll execute this. Quickly verify that in the legs page. So all these points are going to be on Victor 163 until you get to Slim. A nice easy way to check your flight plan, go to your nav page. Click this twice until you get this full circle. Range in however you need to and then when you click next it's going to step through your waypoints that was, that'll be your last point and then obviously to KGRK so you see route 1 is in white route 2 which you haven't entered yet is always going to be or the unused route which you haven't entered yet is always going to be in blue so we'll go back to route 1 now we'll load up the GPS approach into Robert Gray. You're going to see a bunch of the approaches that they have available. On the left side are going to be the stars. So we're expecting the RNAV into 1.5. This is going to be the transition, AGJ. I'm going to select that and we're going to execute it. Now this will be thrown into the flight plan as you see, these are all the points on your approach that you loaded up. Again, this is what we're expecting. This route discontinuity is going to prevent you from going direct AGJ after SLIM, because that's AGJ is where uh, the approach starts. It's IF. All right, you're taxiing out. And your flight lead gives you an alpha check to your first point, in which case it's going to be San Antonio here. So per the brief, phaser, alpha check, San Antonio, or phaser, standby, alpha check. Easiest way to do that, go to your legs page. If this is where you're alpha checking to, put this in your scratch pad. Go back to your menu. Next, you'll see Fix. Drop that in. San Antonio give you a radial 
that you're on from San Antonio and a distance. Realize that an alpha check is always two. So he's going to call phaser one, three zero three at one two point five. And if you have this, you have the correct point in there. Bullseye checks will be from. So you're on the one two two radial from San Antonio at twelve and a half miles, but San Antonio from you is a three zero three bearing at twelve and a half miles. That's how you're going to do the alpha check or the bullseye check. This page will stay on this fix until you change it. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff. You can go into your departure, your departure, your arrival, your route, and you can go back to the fix page and it'll still stay here. So it's pretty easy to set up in chalks if you're expecting a alpha check or a bullseye check to somewhere. Alright, you're departed. You're on a 170 heading. Let's just call your altitude 8000. We're already there. Um, they give you a uh, proceed direct San Antonio so the way to do that, go to your legs page, click on the point you want to go direct to, it's going to drop into your scratch pad, and it doesn't matter which one it is, and you're going to want to put it on page one as your first point. Click that, it's going to say execute, go ahead and execute it, and it'll give you a, uh, this should center up, but it'll give you a direct to that point. So you see San Antonio is the active waypoint. Again, if you go direct, this should center up here so that you have a CDI course guidance. And then you've got DME down here. And again, you can do that with any point. So let's say um, they come back. Hey, Phaser, proceed direct Gabi. Click on Gabi. Put it as the first point of your waypoint and execute that. And now you'll see you've got a different bearing pointer. This will update to Gabi. And now you'll have your CDI centered up. So right now they got us going direct Gobby. And we level off, get our ops check done. And then if we lost our engine, where would we go? Well, we go to nearest. It's going to give you a page of options you can choose. Unfortunately, they don't have published waypoints. They just have custom and user. But they do have airports, VHF nav aids, and NDBs. This is the filter. You can apply for your airfields. So I don't want to see anything less than 3,000. Uh, and then hard surface. So let's say we're in route. We're going direct Gobby. And if you had an engine malfunction, where would you turn? Click on airport. And you're going to see a list of airfields. And they will be sorted by nearest to farthest. So right now Randolph is going to be our closest one. If we want to go direct San Antonio, click on this guy and it's going to give you a direct to. We can click that and it will automatically go ahead and point you there. Realize it's going to give you the bearing pointer like we said because you went direct to that and it's going to give you your DME but it's also going to save your flight plan which is handy. We're going to go direct Gobby again execute that and then continue on our way. Okay we're en route to Gobby right now flight plan route. We know that we're going to shoot an approach and let's say we're just going to come right back home. We got the gas for that. So we want to load up a route to secondary flight plan. So this is route one. This is obviously the flight plan that we're on right now. But we're going to want to go from Robert Gray back to Randolph after we do our instrument approach and then come back. A few ways you can do this. Uh, what I like to do is use my scratch pad to the max extent practical. So you're going to go back to route one. Take Robert Gray. Drop that in. And then we can either punch in Randolph, or we can go into nearest, pull Randolph from there, let's go back to root, and you've already got it. So a few different ways you can do that. Phaser 1's good, and then let's say we want to go just uh, direct from there. So let's go to the next page, direct.
confirm this guy. So this is now your secondary flight plan that is awaiting you to activate it. If you were to activate this thing, so route two, notice you have an activate button. If you were to activate this, all this would turn green and route one which is what we're flying now, all this would turn blue, which means it's inactive. So you always have a flight plan on standby. And if you activate it, it's going to say execute. Right now for this course, we're just going to say uh, erase and undo this. Another thing you can do to get ahead of the airplane is you have a list of standby frequencies you can use. We know that when we get closer Robert Gray Approach, or Gray Approach, is going to be either Victor or Uniform. We'll go ahead and use Uniform. It'll be 323.15 off of the plate. So we can get ahead and, and put that on your standby here. This page is real easy to get to. It's upper right hand of your menu, Frequency. 323.15. Now when they say contact Gray Approach on 323.15, instead of typing it in later on or as they read it, we've already got that in standby and it's as simple as clicking this button right here, the swap button. So when you're ready to swap, click this button, but in order to input you'll hit the same button as well. So 323 and then say uh, 15. So that's the standby. It's going to work for uniform, Victor, as you see, VOR. So you know that you're taking off in bad weather and you want to shoot the ILS coming back in. Technique is to put the ILS frequency here so that all you have to do is DME hold and then swap the ILS frequency in here to make it easy on you. Come back into the pattern, 400 here uh, or you know 0, 400 at Seguin. It's uh, real handy to just uh, hit the frequency and, and um, swap them. All right, let's say uh, you get a little bit further down the line, and they say phaser, proceed direct, Gooch Springs, so AGJ, cross AGJ at 8,000, hold is published, expect further clearance, 1930, So we already know how to go direct. Let's find AGJ. Bring that up to page one. Make that your active waypoint. Execute. This will swap over. AGJ. There it is. We're pretty far out. You center up the CDI and get us going direct. But we've got to hold this published. So on the approach plate, it looks like four nautical mile legs, 190 course inbound, right hand turns. So a couple ways to do that. Go to the hold page. It's going to come up with a fix that you have right now. It's going to say, hey, do you want to hold at AGJ? Another way we can get into this page, if you're in the legs page, if you do slash H and drop it on any waypoint in here, it's going to come up with this hold just like we hit hold. So two ways to get here to, uh, to hold it a fix. AGJ, yep, it's going to be right hand turns as published. Inbound course 190 as published. We don't want to do leg timing. They gave us a leg distance as published, so we'll do four miles. Leg time goes away, leg distance comes up. Exit type manual, meaning we will click this when we want to exit. So we're going to hold pretty much indefinitely. They gave us an expect further clearance time, but uh, we'll, we'll hold until we're ready to, to depart. We're going to execute this. And then if we want to hold somewhere else, it gives us a new hold option. So realize it automatically populates the slash H, and then we can drop that kind of on anywhere we want to. But we don't want that. Now let's go ahead and look to make sure, because we've got 60 miles till AGJ, to make sure that we built this correctly. Let's go to your nav page. There it is. 
So we just went, just like we checked earlier, we cycled through our waypoints, next or previous, so present position, next waypoint is going to be AGJ. This looks just like the holding pattern that is published. So probably a teardrop entry, left turn, right to intercept the inbound, and then right hand turns. So now, because we have this hold in, this flight plan will not sequence past AGJ until we tell it to. So now we're in the hold at AGJ. You'll see now that in your hold page, you'll have an exit hold button. Exit type means manual. If the approach had a mandatory hold, so the bold black line, that didn't fit into any of your SNRT procedure turn exceptions, this would plan for your hold and it would be, it would say something like a, a one time hold. Basically it's going to hold one time and then it's going to sequence the next waypoint. We'll talk about that later on. But here because we built that manually, we have an exit hold and this is going to stay in this hold indefinitely until you exit the hold manually. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll execute that. And at the same time, ATC says expect vectors for the RNAV 15. So this is our approach, our full approach. Start at AGJ, August, Napke, and then onto the runway. ATC says uh, turn left heading 300. Uh, these would be vectors for uh, final RNAV 15. So how do we do vectors for final on a GPS? Pretty simple. First thing we're going to do is we're going to find the FAF. In this case it's going to be NACB. NACB or NAPK, you got the FAF identified. We're going to go direct. Before we execute this thing, we're going to want to come down here and input the final approach course. So we're going to put in 153. It'll get close. If it's within 5, it's good, but we're going to put in 153. Once you put that in, it'll the number will get bigger. We're going to execute that. And then as you see, you'll have an infinite line pretty much going from nap key for you to intercept and it'll arbitrarily end somewhere out there. But that's how you're going to get this course arrow on your FMS. Let's say you wanted to intercept uh, AGJ, like a westerly course. We'll do the same thing we just did with the FAF. AGJ, that's the missed approach point because it has the holding already populate it in here because you loaded up the approach. Go to page one, drop that in, and now we want to go intercept it 270 west. So we're going to drop that in just like we did vectors for the GPS approach. The numbers will get larger, we'll execute it. And now you can see you've got the same line you did for Napke. So that's pretty much some of the uh, basics to slightly advanced FMS techniques and setup. We'll put more of these out as you guys want uh, more info or, or more techniques on how to do things. Other things we'll, we'll probably go over soon, throwing in a manual waypoint, targeting, advanced mode, all that other stuff. But as of right now, I think this is going get to get you guys to where you need to be. So we went over loading the route, loading the flight plan, loading up GPS approaches, alpha checks, bullseye checks, going direct to point, your nearest airfield function for emergencies, how to uh, manipulate the route to page, and route one page, your frequencies holding, and uh, vectors to a GPS approach.